Hey everyone, it's the man with a capital M here. Today I'm going to stray a little bit uh, from what I usually do in these videos, which tends to be, you know, very small kind of niche luxury goods, uh, to something that um, I think will be useful to a lot of people. And that's basically uh, a review and then comparison of both the uh, Saddleback Thin Leather Briefcase and the uh, Filson 257 Briefcase. They're two very different things, but uh, I think the two brands probably get cross-shopped between each other a lot and so I hope that uh, by kind of sharing some thoughts um, that I have on both these bags after having them for a while uh, it'll help people make their uh, make their purchase decision. So first what we can do is take a look at the uh, Saddleback bag. Now my story with Saddleback is that uh, when I started kind of getting in to sort of luxury goods and nice bags and briefcases and things like that um, Saddleback came up a lot and um, you know I was looking for something Pretty simple actually, you know, a lot of bags unfortunately nowadays have a lot of buckles and pockets and zippers and I just wasn't really attracted to that. I wanted something very simple and I wanted something leather. You know, when you think of a, a nice briefcase, uh, leather tends to kind of be the first thing that uh, that comes to mind. And you know, Saddleback really does kind of fit the bill. They're, they're built like uh, tanks, they're all leather, and uh, they certainly do look very simple. And you know, if you were to look at this thing, um, it really doesn't get much more simple than, than what uh, is going on in this thin briefcase package. So you can see from the front, it's basically just a, a one flap design. Uh, if I start turning it to the side, you know, you'll see there's some substantial hardware here. It's a dual gusseted design, so there's going to be two pockets inside. And if I turn it around, there's basically just um, one newspaper pocket in the back. So very simple. You can see that the uh, shoulder strap has um, two pads, and um, I can't. I'm not going to show in this video. You can YouTube it, but uh, there's actually a way to turn this into like a, a very simple backpack, basically. So if I then just kind of go and show you inside what this thing looks like, again, it's it's definitely an exercise in simplicity. So it's basically just one strap here. We can open it up. Now the inside is uh, lined in very tough pigskin. It feels almost like plastic and it's, it's extremely abrasion resistant in the sense that there's absolutely no scratches on this. Looking inside, I apologize if there's a lack of light. It's really just you know two very simple pockets. There's a back pocket here, and then a front one, which is roughly the same size. And then this kind of pocket here for, uh, you know, miscellaneous uh, chargers, papers, that type of thing. So there's really not much going on. As far as, okay, you know, how does it wear? You know, what was it actually like to use? You can notice that it scratches really easily. So there's a scratch up here. Um, as a matter of fact, if I pull back and I just do that, you can see there's a scratch. I mean, it really doesn't take anything to put a mark on it. As a matter of fact, the first kind of big trip I took to this was, with this rather, was on business going to Australia. And um, you know, from being put under the seats all that time, the back got scratched up. It looks like a, a cat got to it. But honestly, you know, I really don't mind. You know, the idea with uh, these particular bags is that they're supposed to, to age well. You're supposed to break them in and they're supposed to kind of take on the character of the owner. And for the time that I used it, uh, it definitely did do that. Um, you know, one thing about Saddleback Leather products is that they have a very uh, kind of devoted fan base, and I think a lot of that has to do with kind of the customer service that Saddleback has and sort of the, the image that it projects. I will say that, you know, in terms of styling, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that it, it is very simple. But now that I've actually um, gotten more into menswear and more into bags and I've seen what's out there, uh, it's, it's what I would call, um, I guess, roughneck chic. Rough, roughneck chic, I'm sorry. And, and the way I can explain that is that I used to work um, in the oil and gas field. I go to rigs. And, uh, you know, people did actually have a lot of money. A lot of the roughnecks, you know, had money to buy themselves nice things. Um, so you'd see a lot of, you know, uh, very expensive, chromed out, you know, King Ranch F-250s, for example, you know, very expensive vehicles, but uh, certainly not a 911 or anything like that, or, a, you know, a BMW 5 or 6 series. And I can totally see someone like that liking something like this. If I was still going out to the field, 
I had to get you know contracts signed or I was still doing work out on the rigs. This would fit in perfectly. Another uh, way that people have described them, it's very Indiana Jones. And uh, I think a lot of that is owed to this strap. You know, I would be a lot more um, enthusiastic enthusiastic about this now if there was you know sort of a buckle mechanism and then you have a much kind of more cleaner more modern look I think that would uh, that would fit kind of with more outfits and would fit in an office so it's it's a beautiful bag I mean don't get me wrong on that it is very well built it does look very nice I just think I'm not as wild on the styling as I was when I first bought it uh, another thing um, it's, it's important to a lot of people is you know where where do these bags come from um, it's not something that's kind of swept the country, but there is definitely a, a resurgence in interest in getting made in the USA goods. And uh, this particular one is made in Mexico. Um, and if you kind of believe the lore of the company, you know, where the, the founder, Dave, was, uh, you know, I think teaching uh, down in Mexico, he wanted a bag made for himself. He found a leathersmith. And that's how Saddleback was started. So it's very much in keeping with the, the lore of the company. And, you know, um, made in the USA, I, I sort of like because it implies quality and a lot of the goods are, you know, guaranteed for a, a lifetime. And these bags actually have a 100-year um, guarantee. You know, the motto is, uh, you know, so good your grandchildren will fight over them. Um, and so th this is definitely not an issue, a case where, you know, it's not made in the USA and so quality would suffer. It's not at all like that. Um, so I, I would say, you know, for the price, and when I, when I bought it, I want to say it was about $460, and they've raised the price since then. So it is an expensive bag. You definitely get what you pay for. Uh, I just find that, you know, having evolved a little bit in my taste, uh, it, it's not my go-to bag for every day. And that actually gets me to uh, the next bag, which is the uh, Filson 257. So let me go ahead and move this one out of the way and bring the 257 into view. Right. Now, Filson is also another brand that's uh, got a lot of heritage. It was started um, in the late 19th century, I believe. And this is also uh, a bag that has made a, a lot of, a bit of a comeback, actually. So, uh, this has a, a lot of heritage in the sense, you know, it's very much known for kind of hunting, hunting gear and just general outdoors gear. But uh, a lot of uh, very young, kind of young professional types are carrying these around. So, you know, lawyers, accountants, that type of thing. I'm actually in oil and gas consulting and uh, would qualify as a young professional. And this is my go-to bag. So before I give you my thoughts um, on kind of why it is, let's just go over the bag uh, itself. So technically, what, you're, uh, what you, you get is a 22 ounce uh, rugged cotton canvas. Uh, three actually four different colors now uh the first is the classic tan which uh, which i love um the second is the otter green which has a very kind of um i guess i kind of describe it as like an english country feel then there's also uh brown which I, I don't like as much you don't get a very good contrast with the leather and uh something new actually is uh navy blue which looks really great uh to me it's more of a casual color and i think it'd, it'd go great with some of the the summer outfits that tend to be a little brighter but i, I would say that if you can only get one uh, the most versatile is going to be probably this tan here so looking at the leather uh, it's English um, vegetable tan leather. It's a really nice uh, dark brown. You can see right here that uh, there's definitely a, a nice wear pattern there. When you first get this bag, the leather is really, really stiff. Um, I got this probably, um, say, five, six months ago, and I use it every day to go to work. So it's softened up really nicely, and uh, it just, just looks really good. Looking at actually um, what this thing will carry it's a lot more spacious than the saddleback bag now that's something that you have to be careful with you know i'm definitely into minimalism and not carrying around a lot and uh part of being a minimalist is not having something that will allow you to carry around a lot so when i got this i got it uh over the smaller 256 briefcase because i knew i was going to travel and I wanted the option of uh, being able to put more in this if I had to take it as a carry-on. But for everyday use, I'm very careful not to overfill it to kind of uh, A, keep it comfortable on my shoulder and B, just make it look good. But so looking at it, you know, I've got uh, this one pocket on the side here. And um, the storm flap will actually come over that. So it'll go over and then button up here. Kind of picking it up and turning it to the side you'll see that you've got these uh, side pockets here which you know it's quite crowded you can see with all the hardware and the leather and so it's not these pockets aren't something I use very much 
looking at the storm flap, you've got the uh, Filson logo. Might as well have the best, which definitely applies to these bags here. Looking at the back, um, I've got another handle here for, um, I'm sorry, another pocket for newspapers and magazines and such. And now looking on the inside of the bag, if I can show you, we've got several pockets. So we've got the first one where I keep, um, you know, a charger for my laptop. I keep um, my camera as well. We have another pocket inside. And then this is where um, kind of most of my uh, smaller goods go. So you've got the big pocket, which has an area for a little notebook and also your passport here when you're traveling. It's got a couple of uh, separate pen and pencil holders. It's got another pocket here, which I don't know if you can see, for uh, another kind of notebook or notepad. And it's got these three folded pockets here, which are very useful. I keep uh, business cards in them. I keep cables if I need to, like iPhone chargers, things like that. So just, just very easy to stay organized. And then uh, this big back pocket right here. You can probably see in the shot the zippers are uh, incredibly sturdy. You know, one of the things that turned me on to the Saddleback bag was uh, no zippers. You know, zippers are definitely a weak point, but uh, these are very solid YKK brass zippers and uh, feel really, really good when you're opening them, closing them. So um, even though I was a little weary of buying a bag with zippers, um, no issue when it comes to this particular one. So now kind of my thoughts on how this stacks up relative to the uh, the Saddleback bag. Let's see if I can bring them both into the shot here. So, you know, with regards to the Filson bag, um, it's, it's a lot softer, obviously, because it's canvas and not leather. And, you know, with the Saddleback bag, because they are so sturdy, they do weigh quite a bit uh, without even being loaded up, and they're incredibly stiff. Now, I understand that part of the charm of a Saddleback bag is to kind of break it in yourself, but it's really work. I mean, it's a lot of work. Whereas uh, with the Filson bag, um, it's just, it's very soft, it's very easy to carry around. So as long as the, the leather is worn in on the straps, it just, it just feels really great. In terms of, you know, durability, uh, because it's canvas and not leather, it doesn't mark or scratch. And I have zero qualms about um, beating this up and throwing it around. I mean, it's just performed beautifully. And uh, it's something that I carry around every single day with me. So just an excellent, excellent bag. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, price, that's also a very important consideration. So the Filson bag, actually, uh, this particular one, the 257, runs uh, 275, I think, uh, whereas the smaller 256 runs 225. So, you know, compare that to the Saddleback, and you're almost looking at two for one on the Filson versus the, the Saddleback bag. As a matter of fact, um, you know, these Filson briefcases, they make several of them now in different colors, and they're incorporating tweed into some of them now. So it's just very easy to kind of build your collection uh, if you're looking to get this as, uh, as a nice fashion accessory as well as something that's, that's functional. In terms of uh, where this thing is coming from, uh, this is made in the USA, which is great. It's uh, guaranteed for life. So it's also got a, a great guarantee. Um, they'll last forever. I mean, it's very easy to look online and see pictures of people, you know, 20-year-old Filson bags, so, so not a problem there. Um, I just, you know, I know that some people are probably not going to like this assessment, um, but even though they're both beautiful bags, um, I just think that in terms of uh, styling and um, just general utility, I think the Filson probably uh, does it more for me. You know, this, again, it, it's it's a nice style, but I just don't think it's really my style anymore. Whereas if you look at the, the Filson, um, yeah, you know, it does have that look of a rough kind of outdoorsy bag. But, you know, given the, the kind of trend more towards, you know, the sort of um, kind of, I guess, uh, urban hipster, you know, lumberjack type of look where, you know, we're all going back to the heritage brands. I think the, the Filson, you know, does really well with that and just sort of blends in better, I think, with, you know, the office casual atmosphere. I think if you were looking to, you know, take something into a boardroom, you might say, well, you know, do the saddleback. But e even then, I think I'd be looking at something uh, a little bit more structured, like an attache case. And again, with less of that, what I call, you know, roughneck chic look. So, you know, if I could only take one um, and, you know, money was an issue, I would probably say go with the Filson uh, between the two of them. But, you know, I, I will say that you can't go wrong with either of them. If you have the money for both, great. But, 
uh, if you can only do one, uh, I would say definitely uh, get the Tan Filson bag and then use the savings to uh, to pick up one of the tweed bags or even you know get another one in uh, navy blue. So, you know, having uh, said all of that, if uh, anyone has any questions um, with regards to you know some some more thoughts on these bags or you know maybe you know want to know what else I've got going on or what my next things uh, I'm going to buy or um, with relation to Filson especially, you know definitely let me know. Drop me a, a comment or you know uh, hit me up on Twitter. It's uh, at man with a M, uh, or you can go to my website, which is uh, www.man with a capital M, all spelled out, uh, dot com for more information. So look forward to hearing everyone's thoughts, and uh, thanks very much for watching.